from up north. It is good to see you and also a welcome to those worshiping with us online. We appreciate uh, your checking things out. Hopefully you'll be able to get down here at some time or another. Note also the announcements in the bulletin, the flowers placed by Gary Harris in memory of his wife Maya. We thank him for those. Other announcements in the back beginning on page 29. The Bible study for the Gospel of Mark continues on Mondays at noon and also on Thursdays at 10 a.m. Not tomorrow, but the following Monday, we are adding a 3.30 section to the Mark Gospel of Mark Bible study. Also, a thank you to the number of people who came and cleaned up North Frontage Road last Saturday. That was very much appreciated. If you know of people who are in need or going through difficulties at this time, we do have a number of Stephen ministers who are available. Or if you're aware of neighbors and friends, just give us a call. We can be in contact. We have two grief share groups, one that meets at 10 o'clock on Mondays here in the Fellowship Hall classroom that you can bring people or refer people to, and one that meets on Mondays at 10 o'clock at the Sunrise Mobile Estates that you're also welcome to. For those of you that want to warm up your kitchen this week, uh, I see that the Fellowship Freezer is hungry, so please feed it. Note, next week is the day that we bring in our food collections. For those listening online, be reminded that next weekend your time changes. So we go back, or we stay the same, but then we will be mountain time, which will be an hour difference for you. Note also the men's breakfast on Saturday, November 7th. As we worship this day, we celebrate our Lord's Supper. Our Lord's Supper is open to all baptized believers who trust in Jesus as Savior and who seek to learn to live with him as Lord of all areas of life. At this time of the year, it is served uh, in a different way. As you come forward, you will receive the wafer of bread, the body of Christ in your hands, and you will have a uh, choice in the tray. The dark colored liquid is wine. The lighter colored liquid is white grape juice, being the, the blood of Christ. Those are disposable plastic glasses, and after you use them, they can be put in the baskets at the end of the pews. We would really appreciate it if you would fully fill out the front side of this colorful communion slip that you found in your bulletin. Note there is room at the bottom for prayer concerns, and for those of you joining us on live stream or later, if you have prayer concerns, please contact the office uh, by email or phone or whatever. Let, let us know about them. We'll get them out to the prayer team uh, soon after you let us know. Also note on the back side, there are many other options, and there is room for place the things that you want to make the office aware of. So you can either give these to the ushers or place those in the offering plates in the back as uh, you are leaving the church today. Please stand. We begin our worship on page four. As together we affirm that God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us silently confess our sin against God and one another. God of the covenant, you have never failed in your promises to us, but we often fail to be your faithful people. We waste our time and resources on things which do not give life. We doubt our abilities and hide our light away from the world. We flee from your call when it doesn't appeal to us. Forgive us and call us back into your sustaining love. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering hymn is found on pages 5 and 6.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Together we pray, eternal God, your true dwelling place is with your people. Make of us a holy temple where you may be praised and your will carried out for the sake of all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the worship psalm.
Good morning. First lesson is from 2 Samuel, chapter 7. Now, when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought you up, the people of Israel, from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people, Israel and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors. I will raise up your offspring after you who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will punish him with a rod such as mortals use, with blows inflicted by whom I put away from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with all these words and with all this vision, Nathan spoke to David the word of the Lord. Psalm 46, we will read responsively. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, Shelah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Reformation Sunday, from the Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and wondered 
what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the gospel of our Lord. Lord. Please be seated. Warning. The story soon to be told is fictional and should not be used as an example of how to solve theological disagreements. I was walking across the bridge one day, and I saw a man standing on the edge about to jump off, and I immediately ran over and said, Stop! Don't do it! Why shouldn't I? He said. I said, well, there's so much to live for. Like what? I said, well, are you religious or atheist? Religious, he said. Are you Christian or Jewish? Christian? Me too, I said. Are you Catholic or Protestant? He replied, Protestant. I said, me too. Are you Episcopalian or Baptist? Baptist, he said. I I said, wow. Me too. Are you Baptist Church of God or Baptist Church of the Lord? He replied, Baptist Church of God. Me too, I said. Are you the original Baptist Church of God or the Reformed Baptist Church of God? Reformed Baptist Church of God, he replied. Me too. Are you Reformed Baptist Church of God, Reformation of 1879, or Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation of 1915. He replied, Reformed Baptist Church of God Reformation of 1950, to which I said, die, heretic scum, and pushed him off. (laughs) Down through time, unfortunately, that is how many religious and theological issues were solved. Somebody had to die. Somebody had to prevail. And even inside of families, and perhaps you know this from your own situation, separations occurred because someone decided that their Christian path was the only true Christian faith. Some here have experienced that. There are a number of churches yet today that still proclaim that particular bias. So perhaps on this Reformation Sunday, we need to realize that all Christian churches will always stand in need of God's reformation and reforming process. You see, today is Reformation Sunday, and it's observed most, in most Lutheran churches, but it's not meant to be a Sunday where One church is proclaimed as having a corner on all truth because there isn't such a church and where another church would be slammed. It is a day especially to remind us that every Christian life, yours and mine, are always in need of God's reforming power. And every church is in need of God's reforming power. Because it is so easy to go off the right path and to um, focus on the wrong things. 
Now, for the first 15 centuries, basically there was one church, and that was the Roman Catholic Church. And often the monarchs and leaders of the country would, or a region would decide the religion of the people if there was going to be any religion or faith at all. Well, as can happen in organizations which you're a part of or in churches, down through time, layers of rules or expectations can obscure the original purpose of the organization, the original mission of the organization. And that happened in the church. And it can still happen in any church today where tradition and man-made rules or building projects overshadow the original mission of the church, which is to proclaim Christ crucified and risen. Now, I'm sure that you've seen church after church launch huge building projects. I've, you've told me about them. That right now they're having a hard time paying the debt service on. That's not uncommon. And in the Christian church, that's known as having an edifice complex. Now, to give a setting for the beginning of the Reformation, it was in the late 1400s. The Pope and the Emperor were often so close in power and alliances that economics and politics and faith and the law were all seen as one. The Gutenberg printing press, a wonderful invention for communication, was only 30 years old. Columbus was getting his ships ready to sail. Inventors were trying out many new things. And then on November 10th of 1483, the second child was born to Hans and Margarita Luther in Eisleben, what used to be East Germany, and he was named Martin. Now, Martin Luther's father, Hans, was involved in the mining of minerals, a very hard labor. And like all parents, they wanted their children not to have to work as hard as they did and to have a better life. Martin Luther began to question life. You know, they, had, they wanted them not to know so much hardship, and so they sent Martin to the best university that they could afford with the intention that he would become a lawyer, which at that time was a respected occupation. But... <laughs> That's not funny, is it? <laughs> but Martin Luther began to question life and death and faith and God and eternity when a good, good friend died of the Black Plague in 1505. Now, Martin was 20 years old. The average life expectancy was 28 years old. So it was understandable that he himself might be wondering if he would be ready to meet God if he died younger than he expected. And then one day, on a three-day walk from the university back to his parents' home, a thunderstorm caught him by surprise, and Martin fell to the ground uh, in the peak of the lightning and cried out to the saint of the miners, which was Saint Anne, and he said, Saint Anne, help me, and I will become a monk. And Martin kept his word. He kept his promise, which, of course, greatly angered his father, who had other goals for him. And he became a serious student of Scripture because he personally was looking for the peace of God, which he could never find. But Martin, from what he had heard, only sensed an angry and a very judging God. And he tried everything. He tried all the arduous and rigid spiritual disciplines, along with self-flogging with the whip, to somehow try to earn God's favor, to be more acceptable to God. But there was no peace. And even after he was ordained as a priest, there was no peace. And even after he was sent away to study for his doctorate in theology, there was no peace. 
And finally, his confessor and friend thought that perhaps a pilgrimage to Rome would solidify his faith and give him the peace he wanted. So off went Martin to Rome. And there Martin saw many, many beautiful things, many impressive things and many sainted relics. And he even went so far as to uh, go through the whole thing of the sacred stairs, the Scala Sancta, where one goes up the steps on their knees, praying on and kissing each step as they go. And it was during this time that Martin began to remember a portion of scripture from the New Testament that rang in his mind, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. You see, God was beginning a personal reformation in the soul of Martin Luther. And when he returned to Germany, he began to ask some serious questions of how what was practiced really aligned with the teachings of Scripture. Well, as he looked more and more, Martin found many discrepancies. And at this time of the year exactly, on All Hallows' Eve, next Saturday, he posted 95 theses, statements of discussion and difference, on the door of the Castle Church in Wittenberg, East Germany. Now, of course, as I said before, Gutenberg had invented the printing press 30 years before, and so copies were made. And they were passed around not just Germany, but all over Europe, wherever people could carry them, and the discussions began. Discussions that weren't allowed before. Also, around that time, a fundraiser came from Rome to raise money for the building of St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Now, many of us, when we go home from Christmas Eve worship, may turn on the TV, and one of the things you might see is Christmas Eve from Rome. And St. Peter's Basilica is beautiful. It's ornate. You can't, you know, it's just breathtaking. If you want to put it that way, you could say that it really was that particular pope's edifice complex. But the fundraiser, John Tetzel, was telling people that, he could, that they could have their sins forgiven or the sins of relatives who had died forgiven by contributing to the building fund. And Luther stated that that practice sent a very false message to the people, that forgiveness could somehow be purchased. Martin Luther wanted a true discussion and a return to the truth of Scripture, so that it would not harm the faith of the people, who would then think that the rich could afford more forgiveness, of course, than the poor. He wanted to be part of a return to the truth. It wasn't his intention to be part of a separatist movement. He wanted to reform the church from the inside. But think about it. Messing with a fundraising strategy that was successful, very successful, was not going to be tolerated because it interrupted the money train. And so Rome sent people to debate Martin Luther and to ask him to recant his works and to admit basically that they were not true, that they were false. But he couldn't do that because he was committed that they were based on Holy Scripture. And that caused, eventually, the Pope to write what is called a bull of excommunication uh, against Luther, which basically expelled him from the one true church and gave him a one-way ticket to hell. Now, I gather that was lifted about 500 years later, not that it really mattered. But reform did come to all churches, including the Roman Catholic Church, because these things, these 95 theses, caused discussion. It caused many times people to finally get a Bible in their hands and to begin to open the Bible and read the Bible and understand and ask questions for themselves. Some did separate. 
from the Catholic Church and were regarded as Protestant simply because they stood in protest to what was there. Now, you people who would have been kicked by your parents for going on a protest, that's your religious heritage, Protestant, people of protest. Most realized that people are saved by the grace of God, apart from all human efforts. In other words, that we could not somehow be good enough to earn God's love or the forgiveness of sins on our own. As I looked at the Old Testament text for this morning, I think perhaps that was what God was trying to teach David. Because David, of course, was the second king of Israel after Saul. David was mighty in battle with God's help. He was described as a man after God's own heart. But David also had a large ego. So after he had himself built this huge and beautiful house of cedar, he decided, he decided a dream that maybe he could do something to impress God. At first, his advisor, his friend Nathan, said, go ahead, the Lord is with you. But after a dream, he came and said to David, no, this isn't a good idea. God doesn't want or need you to build a temple. Perhaps David was growing a little bit too comfortable in his relationship with God and somehow thought that he could pay God back for the blessings, the successes in battle that he enjoyed. But God informed David of something very different that you heard in the first lesson, but also in the gospel. God informed David that God would build a family for David from which would come the Son of God and the Savior of the world, Jesus, the Messiah. All God wanted from David was faithfulness and witness to the goodness and greatness of God. So where does that leave us? All God wants from you and me is our willingness to follow in faith so that our lives are a witness to the goodness and greatness of God as God uses us to serve the needs around us in this world. Please stand for prayer. Lord God, we thank you for the the life, the crucifixion, the resurrection of your Son that brings to us the forgiveness of sins and life and salvation. Help us cling to that. Help us always to live forward with you in faith, to follow in faith. Help us to give witness to your goodness and greatness for the sake of the world and to serve in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue with the hymn of the day found on pages 13 and 14.
Let us join together in confessing our faith using one of the three great Christian creeds called the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He still death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. When David wanted to build you a house, you assured him that his faithful leadership was enough to please you and honor your word. Keep our vision focused on mission and service when we are tempted to be distracted by projects and ventures of little consequence. Faithful God. You have planted us here, O Lord, alongside animals and all that grows on the face of the earth. May we be sympathetic companions and faithful stewards of your creation. Faithful God. We live cut off from one another, divided by both physical and spiritual walls. Bring us back to each other and make us whole again as people created for community. Heal all those in need, especially those suffering or serving the needs of others during this pandemic. Faithful God. We give thanks for the witness of Lydia, Tabitha, and Phoebe, and the multitudes of unnamed faithful women who have followed and served you throughout the ages. Bless all who dedicate their lives to you without receiving any credit. Faithful God. We pray for all our mission congregations, Araby Acres in Yuma, Crossroads Lutheran in Santan Valley, Maricopa Lutheran in Maricopa, San Juan Bautista Lutheran in Tucson, and Vida Nueva Lutheran in Glendale. We also pray for our care ministries that serve the needs of others, especially Christ Care, Stephen Ministry, Grief Share, and Mental Health Ministry. May they reach out to all people in need. Faithful God. Together we pray. Lord, you know what is best for our church family. Give us what you will, when you will, and as much as you will. Do with us as you think best, and as it pleases you and brings you the most honor. Place each of us where you will, and use us according to your wisdom. We are in your hand as your servants, ready to do all that you command. We want to live not for ourselves, but for you. We want to serve you fittingly and faithfully through Christ our Lord. We have asked and you have heard, and it is enough, O oh God. We thank you for answering our prayers in your good time for the sake of Jesus, our brother. Amen. Our offering, of course, is received at the door for those watching online, on live stream. Please know there are links listed there if you would like to send an offering to this particular ministry. We can.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he gave thanks and broke it and gave it to all saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this also for the remembrance of me. We pray as Jesus taught, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our communion assistants will come forward at this time.
please stand. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you safe in his grace until everlasting life. We pray, O God, in this holy communion, you have welcomed us into your presence, nourished us with words of mercy, and fed us at your table. Strengthen us to love you with all our heart, serve our neighbors with a willing spirit, and honor the earth you have made through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is on page 26. to thank those worshiping on the live stream for joining us this morning. May God bless you as you go about your week. And also, may you always remember that Almighty God has created you and you watching and has a purpose for your life every day. Lord, help us remember, if you are not dead, you are not done. The blessing of the living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit surround you and sustain you, keep you from harm, and fill you with courage. You are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace and, sh and share the good news. Hallelujah. <laughs>